to a special video. My name is Tammy Bakshi, and today I'm with two very special guests, two of my mentors, Timothy Duncan and Thierry Huber. <laughs> Let's begin today. So, before we actually begin, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be covering today. Now, a lot of my subscribers send in questions about platforms like IBM Bluemix and IBM Watson, and a lot of those questions uh, are actually quite redundant. So, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be giving some of those questions uh, to, of course, the experts of those platforms themselves, uh, and let's see what answers they actually have for us. Uh, so let's actually begin. So, Timothy, would you like to introduce yourself to begin? Yeah, thanks, Tam May. Uh, my name is Timothy Duncan, and I have been with IBM for about three, a little over three years now, and the last two years I have been specializing in Bluemix. I am a Bluemix specialist, um, and basically what I specialize in is helping clients take ideas off their brain stems and deliver them as, as applications in the cloud. Um, I help them see the value. It can be a complex solution and a lot to take in when you first come into something like Watson and Bluemix. So um, I help clients break that down in an efficient manner, um, understand what services they might need to use, uh, internalize their ideas, and then develop those ideas on the cloud by connecting them and facilitating connections with people like Thierry. So Thierry, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, what a segue. <laughs> yes, yeah, so my name is Thierry Hubert, I'm the CEO of Darwin Ecosystem, and I build cognitive solutions, basically based on Watson and Bluemix, and we specialize on detecting patterns, and what happens when the pattern changes, that's really what we do. So we are in the heart of this in terms mm -hmm. of the algorithm and how we use this technology and what it really means, and we do this for our clients, and we build microservices, and we build solutions, and we augment people's ability to interact with computers. Absolutely perfect. So, now that you have been introduced to both of my mentors, let's begin with the questions that my subscribers have been sending in. So the first question that I actually receive quite a bit is actually quite simple. What is Bluemix? So. All right, since I'm a Bluemix specialist, I will answer that question. Uh, typically speaking, the analogy I use when describing Bluemix to a client or a first time user of the platform is, um, first I tell them to look at the platform, sign up for a trial so you actually have a chance to look at the UI, but then once you have a chance to experience it, then it's good to hang on to an analogy, something very simple to break down that concept in a way where you can hold on to that while you're progressing through this journey because there is a lot to take in, there's a lot of different sections, a lot of different types of services, microservices um, that you can use in the application development process um, that can make your life a lot easier. So understanding the overall concept before diving into that is very important. And the concept, an analogy that I usually use is, I describe Bluemix as um, the Home Depot of the IT world and then some. So um, it's a place where developers can go and be guaranteed that there are tools available to them to <clears throat> build applications, much like a builder would go to um, Home Depot to get maybe some wood to build something. But then I said, and then some. And the reason why I said and then some is if you went to Home Depot as a builder and then you had all the tools, you compiled them all together that you needed to build a certain project and then there was a back door and you went outside that back door and you had all of this space to build your creations on top of. But not, not only is it space, but it's scalable space. It can be moved around, it's portable. Um, there are all different types of advantages to having on-demand consumption um, and computing power that you have on Bluemix. So, um, very simply put, it's a place that houses a bunch of tools and then you can take those tools to build applications and host them in, I in IBM's public cloud. Now IBM has a lot of um, different technologies, a lot of different applications, um, and a lot of different clouds that you can go into. There is um, there's a System Z cloud, there is a, um, a quantum cloud now, there's a 50 qubit quantum cloud that just got released which will be commercially available in the near future. So. Um, this particular cloud is IBM's premier public cloud. Um, there are other places where you can connect with servers and, and host your host your applications, but this this one in particular, which is Bluemix, mm -hmm. is the public is, is is the generally available public cloud that IBM has. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's a good exactly. hopefully that's a good explanation. <laughs> I believe well, that was. as a developer, so uh, I build I build things, I build right. these houses, I go into your shop, right? That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So. Bluemix is, is really a platform as a service. It's, I don't need to have the equipment. I don't need to have the machine. Anywhere from the servers, which are in the cloud, obviously, so I don't have to have them, 
and uh, for your audience, try to understand the breakdown, like what it is, right? Exactly. So I have a server, and on top of that server, I've got the ability to build applications, mobile application, web application, basically servers and databases. And then I make sense of those databases, right? And I can run statistics on them and whatnot. Okay. But here is where it's fun. Mm -hmm. right? The fun part of Bluemix is that there are these incredible cognitive services, these incredible Watson, and we'll talk about Watson in a little yes. while, right? But these services where I can make the computer do things that humans do naturally. And this is a unique environment, a unique playground for developers to experiment and bring more intelligence to solutions. Absolutely perfect. Now, you mentioned about basically the different types of cognitive services mm -hmm. that Bluemix provides, like with Watson. Mm -hmm. uh, before, before we continue and dive more into Watson, let's talk a little bit about what types of services Bluemix actually provides. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's, good. that's a good conversation to dive into. Um, so there's generally three pieces in Bluemix that you need to be aware of that it's categorized in, and you have compute, um, apps and services. So compute is your infrastructure as a service offerings which be bare metal servers or VSIs or networking or storage. Um, those um, you know basic fundamental components you need in the application development process. Now uh, if you progress up the stack a little bit and you automate a little more of that um, compute and, and, and process that's needed to host an application then you get what we call the apps section. Now apps have compute options such as Docker containers, IBM Docker containers, Cloud Foundry, um, and then OpenWIS, which is probably the most progressive serverless computing, um, event-driven model computing, and then you have um, mobile applications. So those are what we call the, the title of apps. And, and what that means is that um, you're progressing up, up the stack and managing less of the stack um, when hosting your applications. Do you have something you want to add to that, Terry? Well, I'd say that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the modules, which are great when you say what it does, mm -hmm. is the ability, for instance, to throw text at it with your application and receive the personality of the text, the sentiment of the text, or throw words and get concepts so that you can expand and build really cool solutions, or even send, send like voice, like let's say we were taking this podcast and we would throw it through the system and it could tell you exactly where I spoke and what concept I spoke and even analyze the personality. Exactly. These are wonderful things that you, tools that you have available to do these, these incredible applications with. Yeah, and those tools are generally broken up into um, categories. So we just talked about infrastructure. We talked about apps. Now let's talk about services a little bit. Services, you touched on microservices a little bit ago. Now IBM and other third parties have microservices which are uh, blocks of code that perform work for people. Now, there are certain blocks of code that are very useful. So why reinvent the wheel over and over again? Why don't exactly. we just make that a microservice and app developers can then embed that service into their application. Now, there's lots of different types of microservices, um, data analytics, blockchain, IoT, um, Watson is one of them. Do you want to talk about a few of the, of, the, uh, of the categories and what is present in some of those? Well, yeah, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the major categories, right. and I think this is where you're right. The microservice is a little black box that does some magic, and you throw information and it transforms it, and it gives you all these wonderful things. You were talking about IoT, like the Internet of Things. The ability to just, through that platform, through Bluemix, connect objects, mm -hmm. smart objects, right? Exactly. And then analyze the information, yeah. look for patterns, if things different, mm -hmm. or how can I, for instance, correlate what an object is telling me mm -hmm. with what somebody is telling me. I mean, this yes. is like unheard of, <laughs> right? right? And, and I don't need to build it. <laughs> yeah. That's the beautiful, I just need to connect them together. Mm -hmm. So analytic services, you want, to, you want to be able to put a whole bunch of data into the system and say, well, give me a, pro a projection, for instance. Things that would require complex analytical skills and whatnot that you can inject easily in your decision. Great for commerce. I mean, think exactly. about understanding your customer's behavior, mm -hmm. what would they like, what would they not like. Put the data models into it and save a lot of time coding with best practice services. And they span across so many different ways of doing it. So that's how we use it. That's why I think it's very powerful. Yeah, I, I agree. And, um, you know, let's, let's, type, let's take this back to the analogy we use at the very front, which is mm -hmm. uh, Bluemix being uh, the Home Depot of the IT world and then some, having all that capacity to build on top of. So what do we consider services within Home Depot? So if you went to Home Depot and you bought 
some tools, that would be comparable to buying services or compute options. You wouldn't expect to go to Home Depot and build your services, your, your tools from scratch before you go build, right? No. So IBM has, IBM and Bluemix have the same mentality where you can go into the storefront and you can be guaranteed there's enterprise grade tooling that you can count on to build scalable, um, innovative applications in the cloud. Completely. Uh, yeah, so now that we're on the topic of Bluemix, Analytics, the services it provides, and of course Watson itself, as I said, let's jump back over to Watson. And now another question that a lot of people actually ask me is what is the relationship between Watson and Bluemix? Ah. So, the way to pick that one up? Yeah. All sure. right, okay. So think of Watson as being a brain. Like we all have brains and we learn things, exactly. right? So there's a whole bunch of very smart people that have taught Watson how to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And those particular things can be accessible through Bluemix. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Exactly. So if I teach Watson how to be a psychologist, mm -hmm. and this is one of the services, right? The personality yeah. analytics. Exactly. A whole bunch of psychologists went ahead and say, hey Watson, you empty silly brain who can learn very well. Oops. Hey Watson, you empty silly brain who can learn very well. Right? Here is what a fiery personality looks like. Yes. Here is somebody who's really smart, what they look like when they express mm -hmm. themselves. Right? It's like, what are the, the evidence of emotionality and whatnot? Mm -hmm. So all these scientists and all these experts, psychologists, marketing experts, taught Watson how to recognize these things. So that's very complex. Exactly. I could not teach a system to do that. Exactly. You could not teach a system. But these are generic, I would say, assessment. Now they're in Watson, and then we have a Bluemix service that goes in, and that's the difference. Mm -hmm. And basically, I say to Bluemix, you know what? Take this text, give it to Watson to understand the personality of the text, mm -hmm. and bring it back to me so I can use it in my application. Yeah. So, so Bluemix basically acts as a gateway. It's a gateway. Yeah. Bluemix is, is the interface between the brain mm -hmm. and its specialty, exactly. and the service that has been built to leverage it. Exactly. But That's they're two awesome. sides of the same coin. You know exactly. What I mean? Well, yeah. It's like your brain would be useless if we didn't have eyes, a nose, and a mouth, exactly. right? And exactly. ears to receive information and express information. It's the same thing. Right. Right. Completely. And now that we're on that topic of Bluemix services, now that we understand what they are and how they work, one more question. The last question. A lot of my subscribers ask me, how does the pricing model work for Bluemix? Pricing for Bluemix. Okay, so yeah, let's dive into that a little bit. So what's unique about cloud in terms of pricing uh, that you wouldn't get over the past few decades from on-prem pricing? So I generally look at that as CapEx, CapEx costs or OpEx costs. So, generally speaking, over the last two decades, people would buy software licenses, yes. and you would host those licenses on-prem. And generally, those licenses come with a, um, a sizable fee. Now, within cloud, that completely flips the model on its head. Now, you're only paying for what you use. You don't, you don't, you don't have the license that's not on-prem. You're essentially renting it from IBM or whoever your cloud provider is, and um, that capacity is on-demand. So the pricing is an aggregate of everything you use down to the to the to the smallest decimal. So for example, if you're using if you're using a Watson API, you would be charged, for example, Watson speech to text, you would be charged for the number of minutes that you process through that API. Mm -hmm. um, data and analytics, mm -hmm. if you use a database, you would be charged some of the databases are charged by how much storage you have over a length of time. That's also how compute is also measured. How much, mm -hmm. how much computing capacity are you, are you dedicating to your application over the amount of time? Mm -hmm. So something like a gigabyte hour or <laughs> that Cloud Foundry operates on. So the main thing about pricing that you, gotta be, that you have to key in on is you're only paying for what you use and nothing less. And you generally pay either monthly or um, you can pay yearly because IBM deals with enterprise customers. So we understand that um, many of our customers have procurement systems, so we have flexible pricing models which can meet a variety of different use cases. If you like a credit card backed account, we have that option. If you like a, an account that sends you an invoice every month that you can process through your procurement system, we have that option. If you want to budget up front for a year's worth of spending, um, if you are a large enterprise customer and you, op you operate on a yearly budget and you want to budget that up front, we also have an option that you can do that for. So we're very flexible in how you pay for it, but how you're charged is an aggregate of only what you use. Exactly. 
Exactly. In fact, tying back into that analogy, I believe it would basically be like, instead of buying those tools, you're renting them out and, and mm -hmm. paying for whenever you use those tools. Yeah, so, I mean, you would take those tools and immediately go back in the back and exactly. build with them. And then when you're done, mm -hmm. I mean, they would operate. If, uh, if the tool was needed to support the application or your house out there exactly. in that real estate, the tool would stay there exactly. and support it. Exactly. But it would still, it would still technically be owned by Home Depot. Or yes. IBM Bluemix in this case. Exactly. Does that make sense? Completely. Okay. And those were the four questions that a lot of my subscribers <laughs> usually <laughs> ask me about Bluemix and Watson. Uh, in fact, we do have another part of this video coming out very soon uh, about artificial intelligence as well. And so that's going to be it for this video today. So I'd really like to thank both of my mentors for allowing to be my, uh, for agreeing really to be my guests today on the YouTube video, and I'm sure you love them in this video. All right, so if you have any questions for them, you can send them to the contact information I will tell you in just a moment, and I will be glad to forward those questions to them and then direct them back to you. All right, so thank you very much for watching the video that for the, today. That's going to be it for the video. And of course, if you like the video, please do make sure to leave a like, and if you uh, think this could help anybody else you know, please do consider sharing the video as well. Uh, of course, though, if you have any more questions, <laughs> comments uh, or feedback really you can leave them down in the comment section below email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimani even if you have any questions for my mentors as I said you can send those to me and I'll forward that to them and then I'll send them and send the answers back to you. All right, so thank you very much for watching today. So, of course, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well. And up that's here? going to be it for this video. Is it up here? Yes. Is it up here? It's yes, up here. it is. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yes. All right. Thank you very much for watching today. Goodbye. All right.